Now the Fiat engine is a double overhead cam engine, and that means the camshafts are above the valves and the top of the engine, and we're going to want access to those. So the first tool we're going to use is that same 12 millimeter sump wrench that you used for the drain plug for the oil. Now the size is a little bit smaller than the knurled knobs on the top, but without putting a lot of force you can certainly use this and manage to get access to the top of the engine. Now the second thing may seem a little odd, but this is a gravy baster. Now it's a plastic one, they only cost about two dollars. Don't get a glass one and don't use the one out of the kitchen and don't ever ever put this back into use for food service, but you're going to use that to drain some of the oil out of the top of the engine. And you're going to want to transfer that to a nice clean container. And the reason why is that when we're done, you're going to want some of that oil back and we're going to use it to kind of baste these uh, cam lobes and the actual shims and bucket tappets. Now the next thing is you're going to want a very thin bladed flat screwdriver. Now you may actually have a little pick tool and that would be okay too. You're going to use this for two things. One is to help pry the shim up and the other one is so that you can rotate the bucket tappets. Each tappet has a square notch that you'll want to rotate around to the front so that later you'll be able to get tools in to help remove the shims. All right, here's a very important tool, and this is a measuring device. So it's known as a set of feeler gauges. And what these are is a set of metal calibrated thickness shims that you're going to be able to slide in and check the uh, distance between the camshaft lobe and the shim itself. The very best ones are calibrated both in English and in metric. So they come as a set, they're kind of a little oily, but this is what you're going to need to check that gap. All right, next up, doesn't have to be this actual official tool, but you're going to need something to pry with. And this is one that's actually intended for Fiat's. I get this out of a trunk of an X19 I had years ago, but notice that it's got sort of a curved shape to it. And this is going to help you gently pry down on that bucket tappet and shim without scraping anything, scratching it up, and uh, actually apply a little force. And this is what you're going to actually use to push that spring down. Now this is the amazing two finger claw tool and you can see that it's designed in such a way that it's going to go around the camshaft and then it's going to straddle that bucket tappet. Now I have an example here that we'll do. Here's your bucket tappet and a handy shim on top here. You'll see the little notch on the side that's going to come up important later and notice how the tool straddles it. It's actually got two small indentations built in it so that it can straddle that bucket tappet and still give you access to pry this shim up and get it out of the way. The thing I have to caution you about, these are very thin metal. I don't want you to try to use this to pry down the bucket tappet. It's a very strong spring behind it, and I guarantee at some point you will either bend it or you will break it. So the next you're going to need is this set of pliers. They've got needle noses on them, and the idea is when you use that flat screwdriver and you pry up the shim out of the top of the bucket, you're going to be able to reach right in and grab that and pull it out. The next tool is also very important. This is a measuring tool. It's a uh, digital vernier caliper and it's got these two jaws here and a small electronic engine that actually calculates here. So we're going to press that button and you can see how it uh, lights up. You can switch it between uh, English and metric measurements. And as you slide it, see how the numbers change. And that's what you're going to use to check the width of the shim that you remove. So remember we use the feeler gauge in order to check the gap between the shim and the camshaft lobe, this is going to tell us the actual thickness of the shim that we're working with. Now, after you've checked the uh, gap and the shim size on one of the cylinders, you're going to have to put that back, and you're going to have to do all the other ones, too. There's four intake, four exhaust. This is an eight-valve engine. And to do that, you're going to have to rotate the engine around. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. If you happen to have a 38 millimeter socket, it's a very, very large socket and a wrench, and you can get some clearance. You can put that on the crankshaft nut and just sort of rotate it around. You can use what's known as a chain wrench. And a chain wrench looks like a pair of uh, conventional locking pliers. It's got a little set screw back here, and it's got a small hook that will depend on these chain links. And you can size it differently by how many links that you pass through it, and then clamp it and we're going to do that right around the end pulley. Now, the engine pulley on this car actually has a double pulley, which is very convenient. It's very useful. The outer pulley isn't being used. Even if you only have a single alternator pulley, what you can do is uh, loosen the alternator bolt, slacken, take that belt off, and put this chain wrench around the main pulley and just rotate it around using that very slowly. I do not want you to use the starter motor. Don't use the key to bump it around because it's always going to jump a little more than you need. It's going to be very frustrating and it's very damaging to just keep turning that starter motor off and on, off and on in those little increments. So use some kind of manual technique to rotate the engine. 
Now, as always, I recommend that you read through your shop manual first. Get a data sheet, either download from the internet or make up your own so that you can write down your calculations for shims. Gather all of your tools together before you're ready to start the job. And above all, take your time. Don't rush through this and you'll get it done right. <laughs>